everybody. Thank you for being a part of the call today. Um, I want to welcome also, there's a lot of international media on the call today, so welcome. If this is your first time here, welcome. If it is a return, welcome back. Um, really excited about NXT uh, this Saturday, coming from the Toyota Center in Houston. You know, the I want to take a minute sort of to kind of thank the Houston area, the coming off of, you know, massive hurricanes and flooding and just, uh, you know, natural disaster of, of epic proportions. And, um, you know, we made the decision to, to stay in the market and, and to continue forward as that, that was kind of all happening. And, and um, Houston is such a, a great market for us, always has been. Our fan base there is huge, very passionate and, and, um, very excited. So it's great to see the turnout that uh, is happening here, ticket wise, and the amount of people that are that are still invested in coming to WWE programming across all four days. You know, we're there for four days with um, NXT Takeover, War Games Saturday, with Survivor Series on Sunday, and then Raw and SmackDown on Monday and Tuesday. Um, but it's it's just great, and it's great for us to be able to come in there and, and hopefully. Um, as everybody is getting over that and coming off of their, um, you know, World Series victories and and uh, all their celebrations, hopefully they're on the uptick and uh, we look forward to their coming there and, and uh, hopefully making it that much better, put smiles on people's faces, what we do. Um, I think most everybody on the call is aware of the card. War Games is just a, an opportunity for us in a match that hasn't been around in, in uh, some 20 years to um, turn a whole new generation onto what War Games is, what it means, uh, and, it, and it gives NXT its own unique identity in this, in this space. And I'm really excited about that with Sanity versus Office of Pain with Roderick Strong and the Undisputed Era all going at it inside the War Games, two rings, one cage. Uh, and that's going to be amazing. I'm really excited about that. Drew McIntyre versus Andre at Cien Almas for the NXT, women, uh, NXT Women's Championship. NXT Championship. Um, again, very exciting. Ember Moon, Kerry Sane, Nikki Cross, Peyton Royce for the NXT Women's Championship that Asuka vacated. Uh, Velveteen Dream, just a, a new young talent that is kind of making his impact certainly felt against Aleister Black and Cassius Ono taking on the freakishly, um, in many ways, um, kind of strong, everything else, uh, Lars Sullivan. So exciting card, and uh, we have a little bit of limited time today schedule-wise, so I'm going to open it straight up to calls, and uh, thank you again for coming. And if you would like to ask a question on today's call, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. Please limit yourself to one question at a time. If you wish to ask a follow-up, please re-enter the queue by pressing star 1. We'll pause for just a moment to allow everyone an opportunity to signal for questions. And we'll take our first question from Jim Barcelone with the Miami Herald. Please go ahead. I was just curious about, I was curious about Undisputed Air and just the thought process of getting those guys in here and starting them off as a faction, sort of like the Shield was started as a faction on the main roster, but Undisputed Air has come in and you guys decided, hey, let's put them together now. Yeah, I'm sorry, was, I missed the question part of that. The what, Undisputed Air, what were your thoughts of putting them, of you all putting them together now rather than in the main roster and just bringing them in and saying, hey, let's start this faction off right now? Oh, I think it was just to to get them rolling. You know, look, you, you look at everybody differently coming in the door of of a different way. Um, you know, not everybody comes in and you just do vignettes, or not everybody comes in and you just want to plug them in this way. There was a, a buzz about those guys coming in. I think it just so happened that their uh, their the opportunity all kind of came up at the same time, which is not usually the case. Um, Seemed like the right thing to do. They were all into it. Um, seemed like an exciting thing for them. And you know, will they stay together forever? Who knows? Will it will it make it past NXT to the main roster? Who knows? 
Um, but it was a good thing that they could sink their teeth into and also at the same point in time sort of give them the opportunity to, um, while, while experienced guys kind of protect them from a television standpoint uh, and give them a platform where it wasn't just all eyes on each one of them individually. They had the opportunity to um, kind of succeed in, in a different manner. And, and we're also thick talent roster-wise, I think, in, in, in some places. So it, it kind of allowed it to be uh, just a different, different feel. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Vicente Diaz with Mundo Deportivo. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, Paul. How are you doing? Good. How are you, sir? Very good. Uh, I was uh, about to ask you, I've been watching uh, the first World Games matches on WWE Network this week and reading the rules for this year's edition, but something tells me that it's going to be a little bit different from the original. Why did you decide to make some changes to the original idea? Uh, well, I think that when any time that you've had, you know, 20 years between something or, or whatever that would be, uh, you have the opportunity to do it, but do it in a slightly modified way, whether that's making it better, which is hopefully, um, I don't want to say it needed to be fixed, but I think there were some things that there was a few concerns about, um, and we wanted to change those, tweak them up. It worked for us in this three-team scenario because of the way the storyline was written. When the opportunity came up to do war games, the, the storyline naturally fit with the three groups being in there. Um, does that change the initial concept of it? Um, you know, in, in some ways, yeah, but look, it, it's, it's about, to me, it's about war games, right? And it's about teams going to war. So that's really what this storyline entailed. We didn't have groups of five or anything like that, and you would have had to mix them up differently to do it and kind of hodgepodge some things. Um, as far as some of the components of the match, like putting the roof on it or things like that, we're not going to have a roof. Um, I think it's a little bit limiting. I think the the uh, style has changed not saying that anybody's going to do it in this match, but I think going forward as War Games becomes, and I'm, I, I try to think about the future, you know, uh, look, Aaron Anderson wasn't doing moonsaults off the top of the cage. <laughs> um, so I, I think there's a, you know, there's a difference in how the business is done. This allows for there to be a, a little bit of a, a different opportunity to do some things. I don't feel personally um, that we have changed the concept of what it is. And um, it's still going to be the same, you know, scenario. It starts, it, the match itself doesn't really get going and, and doesn't really start until everybody is in the ring. And there's advantages during that time, those time frames as other teams come in. So it, it really, the concept of it is the same. There's some small tweaks, but I think they work better in today's generation, um, some of those tweaks than they did, you know, than it did in the format that was originally used. Thank you so much for the time, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Carlos Zuliaran with uh, Record. Please go ahead. Hello, Carlos. Hi. Hi, Hi Triple H. Thank you for your time. And uh, well, my, my question will be like two in one. The first one is, uh, do you consider that for the, the the fights that are scheduled, we'll want to see uh, one of the best Survivor Series of the last years? And the other question will be, uh, do you think that your presence is still very necessary for the industry of wrestling and WWE for, for it still growing? Um, did you hear the second question? Carl, could you repeat the second part of that? Yeah, the second question is that, do you think that your presence is still very necessary for the, the wrestling industry and all the WWE for it to, to still grow in, your presence in a ring? Uh, look, so uh, as far as Survivor Series, yeah, I think it's a very impactful Survivor Series this year. When you look at some of the matches across the board, not just the Survivor Series match itself, but like the, you know, I think for a lot of people, AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar, um, for the Universal Championship is a match that for many people, you know, 
a few, just a few years ago, they would have thought AJ Styles would have never been in the WWE, let alone facing Brock Lesnar. Um, it's, it's a dream match in many ways. Two, two very unique styles that I think will complement each other very well. Um, you, you go through the rest of that card. It's, it's an amazing card. There's a, there's a lot of um, – I, I have, personally have a lot of things that I'm very interested in seeing on there. As far as uh, Raw and SmackDown and, uh, you know, in the Survivor Series match against each other – um, on the men's side, I think the match is phenomenal. I think there's a massive amount of uh, star power in that from, you know, every which way. Um, are, are, uh, is my presence necessary in it? No, certainly not. Uh, I think creatively, that, clearly that isn't my decision, but um, I, I think that n nobody's presence is 100% necessary uh, I think that that's a phenomenal match, given however you do it. But it, but it's storyline and it's storytelling, and uh, the story ebbs and flows and moves all over the place. And it's not just oh, here's how they got to this match. It's what leads coming out of this match. You know, you turn the corner from Survivor Series, and and next thing you know, it's the Rumble, and you're headed into WrestleMania. So, um, it's it's a uh, it, it, there's stops along the way of the storytelling, and to me, that's what this is. So, um, it's an exciting weekend. I'm I'm just as excited about War Games, and again, like always, as much as I can look at the card on Survivor Series, I can look at NXT's War Games card and say um, it's going to be awesome. And I think they are going to push the main roster again. I think there are a lot of people that are going to have to say, "I got out my game on Sunday," and that's. To me, the biggest benefit of NXT, uh, as as it's you know kind of guys guys and girls in town are growing and feeding into the main roster, but it's also pushing the main roster constantly to make sure that it's always uh, evolving and moving forward and, and being all that it can be. And we'll take our next question from Mike Johnson with PWInsider.com. Please go ahead. Hey Paul, how are you? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm good. I don't know who hit me from behind as I was dialing in to be first, but that yeah, such is life. I don't. What do your numbers get stuck on the phone or something? Well, I I just want to know who won what bet this month. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that I didn't bet for you to be fourth. I can tell you that. Oh, well, well, at least I'm in. At least at least I'm in the upper numbers. Um, I want to ask five. about the or. Thanks, thanks for that. Um. I want to ask about the origins of deciding to bring back war games because the timing of it is interesting because the company's also using Starcade as a title for the event November 25th in North Carolina. So we're starting to see some of the cornerstones and DNA of Crockett promotions slash WCW be utilized by WWE. Were these things independent of each other? Like what were the, or how long were the, was the idea to bring war games back percolating? Like, uh, just give us some insight into how this all came about and whether we're looking at WWE utilizing more of those assets, because traditionally the company has not. They've utilized a lot of ECW stuff uh, and obviously the Monday Night Wars era of WCW. But a lot of the things that people look upon as cornerstones of Crockett Promotions and WCW, the company had traditionally not utilized. So I'm curious why it's happening now and maybe give us some some insight into the ramp up to this. Yeah, the, the Starcade War Games connection is just coincidental. It, it really uh, kind of just two things that happen independently of each other at the same time. Um, War Games is something that I've always had a keen interest in doing and been excited about doing uh, over the years. And when you know when NXT started to ramp up, I was kind of looking for that that right time. Um, to, to be able to, to roll that out and, and to be able to pitch it uh, internally here to, to get it approved to go through. It seemed like now was the right time. Survivor Series is kind of like it, it works within that concept, you know, of, of if we're putting things around the Survivor Series weekend, it works within that construct, it works within that, that realm. And I feel like NXT has matured as a brand over the, the few years to um, – kind of be in a position now to have its own uh, franchise-type uh, events like this where it's meaningful and makes sense. Um, so that was a, a, a 
something that was always kind of on my mind. The timing worked out great, and I felt like Houston and making this a, a, a big, really must-see event, it, the timing was right. Starcade, slightly differently, to be honest, um, Starcade just came around based off of uh, the, the show, when the show was, when we had an opportunity to run um, – uh, Greensboro, you know, like it, it just the kind of the, the date, the time aligned up to see this event there, and then we just internally thought, well, you know, it'd be cool, like let's, let's make that Starcade, and uh, and just play off of that, and uh, you know, that's what we did. So it, it, they kind of happen independently of each other, but for for all the reasons, I mean, these are meaningful assets to fans historically, and for newer fans that haven't seen these things that are coming back and watching them either through the network or whatever, it is meaningful. And, and um, it's never been, I think, I think some time needed to pass uh, for you to be able to do it and revamp it. But I think we're there and I think it's exciting that we can uh, use things from the past that clearly lots of people, including myself, were fans of and, and um, make them meaningful again. I really look forward to, um, especially with war games, just because I'm so hands-on with that one in particular with NXT, really, I want that while new, you know, we're, we're we're taking something from the past and making it the future. And we have an opportunity to slightly reinvent that, but yet stay, to me, to stay consistent to Dream's vision. And, you know, he and I had spoke about that in the past, and I think that it's. Uh, I think we're doing that. I think we're staying consistent to the vision of what it is, and um, yeah, but yet putting a, a little bit more of a today spin on it, uh, just with times changing, and then uh, putting it out there way for a whole new fan base to enjoy. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about both of them, but especially war games. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. I just want to ask: Was it a hard pitch to get? the rest of the company on board with the war games, considering it was such a foreign concept for WWE. No, I think there's been some resistance to it, but I think that, um, you know, in the, in the past, uh, but I think solving a few of the creative issues that were of resistance and, and the timing being right, you know, and the, the NX, NXT's um, kind of uh, success over the last few years and, and moving into that realm where, where it could become its own, its its own product, its own kind of franchise show uh, is meaningful. And I think that's really what the selling point was, is look at the timing is right and it's meaningful and it'll be meaningful for this brand and we really can do it justice and make it mean something. And and that was agreed upon. All right. Well, I thank you for your time. I Sorry about the follow-up question. I, I blanked on the, uh, the rules. That's all right. You snuck it in there. I like that. Good heel. <laughs> And we'll take our next question from Dave Meltzer with Wrestling Observer. Please go ahead. Hey, Paul. Oh, yeah, I was um, I was just going to ask as far as um, I saw that there's do, you're going to be doing a couple of tapings at Center Stage. Is this like now um, a concept of doing more tapings outside of Florida, or is it a new home base? Because I saw it's three like three tapings in a row. No, you know what? It, it, it worked out. Um, c- Full Sail had some scheduling conflicts. There's always conflicts with us, and if you've noticed over the last few years, we've always done, um, like in February, we've always kind of done a taping somewhere else, whether that was at uh, the other university in Florida or something like that. Sometimes we've shot some live event footage and and use that. But um, this year there was a little bit more conflict. You know, they they are growing as an entity, as are we. we came in there with some dates, and you know it's it's tricky for us because the you know you have you have to fill content within a reasonable period of time. And um, as we went in there and looked at the dates that we needed to look, we got to shoot by these dates to get enough content uh, to, to carry us through. We just couldn't make the dates work, um, unfortunately. And you know, Full Sail is still our home. Full Sail is still our partnership. We love them; they're the best. Um, and and it. It's beneficial on both sides, and, and um, you know, it doesn't change anything. At the same point in time, it's cool for me, especially, uh, to, to go to Center Stage Theater. You know, WCW, that's where I shot when I first started there. and, and uh, But it's it's very cool to do. It's a great old historic venue that um, the fans are always hot there. And um, 
it's an exciting opportunity for us to do. We looked at a bunch of different options that worked out the best. Um, you know, just is what it is. Doesn't doesn't change our partnership. Doesn't change anything. It's not a, a, a decision that we're doing other things. It just it just is what it is. We had some booking uh, conflicts. Now, as, as far as that, it looks like you're taping with that many tapings. So you're taping way in advance. Um, is that? I mean, I guess that is, that is that just something that was necessary for that time of the year because of WrestleMania coming up, or just a you know decision that you made that that was the dates that worked out. Yeah, it's it's um it's kind of how the dates worked out and given yeah, given everything that's going on with you know it, it's the the jigsaw puzzle sometimes of trying to put together where everything goes and fits within the five hundred and twenty events that WWE does now on a yearly basis, give or take. Um it's difficult because, you know, when you start talking about going in and shooting television, I'm, I'm, some of those people are the same people that are doing Raw, doing SmackDown, doing other shows for us, doing, um, you know, international stuff for us, right? So th- there's, or pay-per-view. So there, there's other factors that go into it as well. So putting this together is a bit of a puzzle a lot of times. And um, sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes we have to book a few things here and kind of get get things to play out in advance and you got to do what you got to do to make it all work. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, dude. We'll take Dave's our next question from Jason Powell with pro net. Dave snuck in too. I didn't, don't think I didn't give that, you know, Hey, Paul, uh, your comments in the uh, Ric Flair documentary about testing Reed Flair multiple times and Reed knowing when that second drug test was coming has kind of raised some eyebrows. So, I guess just wanted to give you a chance to maybe expand on those comments. Did that go against your typical testing procedures for the new performance center recruits? Yeah, and 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 just to be clear, so that you know, a little bit of that is taken in in chunks and bits and pieces. Right. You know, um, read read when when that whole thing went down, and again, I'm, I don't remember the exact dates, but there was you know we tested them, and as a as an entry level thing, then then that's denied, right? So, so now he's out. So when I say we're, we're going to retest him, what I'm, what I was more referring to is, look, I'm going to get him, give him another chance to come in the system, right? So a little time goes by. We're going to give him another chance to come in the system. But now in his mind, he knows part of that coming in the system involves a test, right? Like he knows what's coming. We're going to give him another chance. I don't remember what the time frame was three months, six months later to, to try to get back into developmental. Um, but, but he, but he not only fails again, but fails worse. You know, um, it's, it just, the first time you, you know, and, and from my point of view with Rick, first time you deny it, you think he made a mistake. There's, there must be some kind of mistake here, but the second time you have to start thinking, like, well, you know, Maybe I'm wrong here, right? But so it it, it came across one way, but the it's, things are taken in, in chunks, you know. I understand. Well, thank you, and good luck with the show. Thank you. Our next question comes from Justin Labar with the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Please go ahead. Hey, Paul. Hey, Justin. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about Pete Dunn. Obviously, we saw him uh, appear a few weeks ago, uh, you know, on Raw when they were in England. Uh, you know, had the match uh, this weekend. I was just curious, kind of, about him and, and the status of the UK show and, and what's going on in that and all that stuff. Well, uh, you know, Pete, uh, Tyler, Tran, Wolfgang, and all those guys are very talented. Um, putting together stuff in the UK, and by stuff, I mean. Um, Television show, live events, product, and 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 making what doing what we do takes some time. Um, I would have loved for have this to have been um, happened, you know, quicker and sooner. But th- things are where they are, right? So we're we're kind of still in that process. I'm keeping those guys, using them, using them here and there. They still doing other bookings, and um, but they're still definitely working with us, and they're still. Uh, our crew and as we um, move forward and, and have something more definitive, which I'm hoping will be soon, um, 
we will certainly be letting everybody know. But th- those guys, they're, they're all very talented kids. Uh, they're, they're actually at the Performance Center right now, a bunch of them uh, training. And, you know, we're, we're constantly doing stuff with them, constantly uh, trying to improve them. And uh, so that when we're, when the opportunity comes, we're ready to go. Um, yeah, I know there's been some speculation, too, about the, there's a match on uh, Saturday that we've announced between Johnny Gargano and uh, um, Pete for the UK championship uh, that, that won't air live, but will air the following week on NXT. So you just have to wait a couple of days and you will see it on NXT. Great. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Miguel Oceda with sport.es. Please go ahead. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the amazing product you are creating with NXT and this amazing card for NXT TakeOver World Games. Now, um, I remember you told me once in our conference call that the great Dusty Rhodes told you uh, booking is not easy. Nowadays, the internet community used to critique the product a lot, but they don't really know how complicated the business is. Could you explain me what are the main difficulties you have when you are booking or planning on a storyline? Well, uh, look, all of it, <laughs> all of it isn't easy. Um, you, one change, and this is, I think, one of the things that people are going to say, like, one change changes everything. And, um, you can have somebody that's injured, you can have somebody that is nursing an injury where you think, oh, they can't handle this level of match. They can get in the ring, but they can't handle this level of match. There could be an injury that takes you out of your storyline. There could be any number of things that can happen to talent or to the process. And when one thing changes, you have to move another piece, which moves two other pieces, which moves more. It's a domino effect, and everything morphs and changes. And and that can be based on something as simple as an injury or something like that, or it could be based on... Um, you know, no, nobody has the perfect crystal ball. So you start to book something or you start to tell a story and um, it doesn't work the way you thought it was going to. It doesn't get over the way that you thought it would. Uh, this this character is not taken off the way I hoped it would. This didn't work, you know, all done with the best of intentions. But when those things happen, you have to make changes. And as you make those changes... Um, it's a, it's just a, it's an avalanche. It's a domino effect, and everything then uh, gets out of whack. And, and keeping track of all that is what makes it difficult. It just really is. And um, you do everything with the best of intent, the best uh, intentions, um, and then you have to see where it goes. Uh, in your mind, it's all epic. <laughs> You know, uh, Dusty would also sometimes say to me, if you can get 70% of what you see in your mind to come out on the screen, uh, that's a grand slam. You know, in your mind, it's epic. And what, what ends up coming out sometimes is is uh, slightly different. Thank you so much for your time, Paul. Thank you. And we'll go next to Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. Please go ahead. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I wanted to get your thoughts on Kurt Angle. Uh, you're on the same team with him this Sunday at the Survivor Series. Just your thoughts on him returning to the ring, and also uh, if that's a rivalry you'd like to reignite down the line. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's awesome that Kurt's back in the ring. Uh, you know, it was an intent when when Kurt first came back to the company. We said, let's kind of take it one step at a time and, and see where things go. Um, it's it's funny that we had kind of just started a process of um, taking Kurt through the medical and making sure that he was healthy and all those things. Just coincidentally, it ended up being completely a coincidence that those – Kurt and I had a conversation and started those uh, that process, and then all of a sudden there was this opportunity and a need and uh, – you know his results had just come in, so it was it was it just was a great coincidence in some ways. Um, but man, I'm I'm excited to see it. I'm happy for Kurt to see where he's at in his life and see the turnaround that he's had, and for him to come back home and 
you know, get the response that he has and have moments like he's having right now, it's awesome. Um, would I uh, love to, yeah, I mean, yeah, would I love to get in the ring with Kurt and, and do something with Kurt? Absolutely. Would it, you know, um, if it's, if it's right, if it is right for everybody, if he continues to want to stay in the ring, if I do, if, if it's right for everybody, absolutely. Kurt's one of the best ever. Um, probably, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody pick it up um, as fast and become so good so fast as Kurt. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm happy to see where he's at in his life. It's, it's awesome. And we'll take our next question from Scott Fishman with Channel Guide. Please go ahead. This is going to be, hey, Paul, going um, to be the last one, Andrew. Okay. Um, go ahead. Once again, pressure. Um, so uh, one of the things, you know, NXT is now in this rebuilding uh, phase. Uh, none more true than the women's division with Asuka leaving a huge void. Um, if you could just talk about what this match means, a, a fatal four-way women's championship, these women – each have not gotten a chance to hold the the women's championship, and also maybe just what the May Young Classic, what the impact that has had, and what it could have now moving forward uh, in the months to come. Well, I think the the May Young Classic will have a, a, a huge impact because it just opened our eyes. I don't want to say open our eyes, but I mean, I guess it did in some ways. Um, it just makes you aware of the amount of uh, women that are out there, the amount of talent that are out there and the level that they're at, at which they're ready. Um, I, I think we are, you know, when you say rebuilding phase. Um, yeah, it's kind of a start over storyline, but when I look at even just that match and I look at Carrie Sane, Ember Moon, Peyton Royce, um, Nikki Cross, and then you start going down the rest of the list, even to the people that aren't in there, Ruby Riot. Uh, Billy Kay, Sonya Deville, Lacey Evans, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan. Like it just, it's, it's. We got a pretty deep town roster, and I haven't even started to get into the uh, Shayna Baszlers and the the Abby Lakes and the people that came out of the May Young Classic, and and um, it's pretty thick and it's pretty deep, and now it's imperative on us creatively to tell storylines that make that be all meaningful. The talent is there. Um, you know, the, the rebuilding phase comes down to the creative, but the talent is there. The talent is there in the men's division. Talent is there in the tag division. Um, talent's there with the women. We just, we just got to go and tell the right stories. And uh, hopefully that's what we're doing and, um, and that people continue to be uh, interested in it. You know, it's one of the things that's always – cool for me is uh, our, the NXT fans are very invested in, the, in that brand um, and I think because we say it all the time, we are NXT, and it, but I truly mean it. Like they, I think there's, there's a feeling that you're at least partially invested and responsible for people making it and, and moving up and getting to the main roster and becoming something more and watching that process go down and um, it's cool to see that level of investment. I think that for a lot of our NXT fans, they're really, really invested in these people as human beings and characters and everything else. And that's a cool thing to see. Um, it's meaningful. It's meaningful to the future of the industry. So I love it. Thanks. Andrew, we're going to have to wrap it up now. Okay, and that does conclude today's question and answer session. At this time, I'll turn the conference back to your speakers for any additional or closing remarks. I appreciate everybody being a part of it. Um, this weekend, for me, is a very cool, um, exciting weekend. You know, and it's been brought up on here a few times with War Games being a kind of creation of and vision of Dusty's um, him being kind of a creative envision of us starting NXT and and all of that. Um, so it's meaningful to me. It's emotional to me. It's meaningful to me, and I'm excited. I want to uh, I want to do his vision justice, and, but I also want to take it to another place that does that where it does justice to the passion of our NXT fan base. So. Um, Thank you guys for being a part of this, and I look forward to uh, catching up with you again after this weekend. Thank you.
Four.